David worked at a construction site. Once, someone attacked him and the unconscious man was taken to a hospital. Police officers who arrived to investigate the case had three suspects who also worked at the construction site. Alex, Ryan, and John. Alex said, I was putting all tiles on the roof when the accident happened. Ryan confessed that he'd been sleeping under the tree, and John claimed that he'd been laying bricks at that time. Can you figure out who's lying? Alex was the one to hurt David. The building has no roof yet, so he couldn't be putting tiles up there. You've bought a cute little rabbit at a pet store. The animal can breed every two months, and every time it will deliver five babies. How many rabbits will you have in a year? You'll have just one rabbit. If you want to have little bunnies, you have to buy two rabbits. Look at these people attentively. Who is a mer person? Pay attention to every little detail. It's the guy on the right. Look, his hands are webbed. Allison won the main prize of $1 million on a game show. But when the shooting was over, it turned out that the host of the show oh, no. had disappeared, together with the prize. The police managed to log into the computer in his office. They saw that the host had sent this message to his girlfriend. It looked like the host had told his girlfriend where he was going. The police went to the airport, but which flight was the host going to catch? Can you figure it out? Now let's see, the first two letters of Atlas are A-T. If we take three letters from the word land, it'll leave us with L-A-N. And the two first letters of tattoo are T-A. Together, these letters make up the word Atlanta. Hurry to the gate, officers! Jack got lost in the woods. Suddenly, he saw a castle. The man rushed there and was greeted by the owner of the castle. You have to answer just one question. If you win, I'll show you the way out of the forest. But if you lose, you'll never leave my castle. Jack agreed. The owner asked, There are four mirrors on the wall. One of them reflects fire-spitting dragon Niren. The second, beautiful mermaid Laura. In the third mirror, you can see a terrifying vampire Sam. And in the fourth, unicorn David. You have to figure out which reflection isn't real and fast. The reflection of Vampire Sam isn't real. Vampires can't be reflected in mirrors. A businessman arrived at his office after a long trip and discovered that some important documents had disappeared from his desk. He immediately called the police and a detective arrived shortly after. After interviewing all the workers, he had a list with three suspects on it. They were Emma, the accountant, Sophia, the receptionist, and James, a sales manager. But each of these people claimed that they hadn't even been inside the businessman's office. Still, it didn't take long until the detective figured out who was lying. Can you do the same? The thief is James. Both women wear high heels in the office, but the footprints on the floor are obviously left by sneakers. You throw me when you need me and pick me up when you don't need me. Can you figure out what I am? Right you are, I'm an anchor. How can you increase 66 by 1.5 if you aren't allowed to make any mathematical operations. Hurry up and crack this riddle! Just turn 66 upside down.
It was Mr. and Mrs. Smith's wedding anniversary, and Mrs. Smith was going to put on diamond earrings her husband had presented her for their wedding. But when she opened her jewelry box, she saw that the earrings weren't there. She called her daughters, Dora and Laura. I've told you so many times not to touch my things. Who took my jewelry this time? Dora exclaimed, I haven't touched your jewelry box. Laura also denied taking her mom's stuff. I don't even wear earrings. Can you figure out which girl is lying? It was Laura who stole the earrings. Her mom didn't specify which piece of jewelry was missing. The next day, Justin was questioning Mary, a suspect in a tricky smuggling case. The girl refused to talk. At some moment, she shouted, Right now, I'd drown my phone in this cup filled with coffee and you'll never find out the truth. But Justin was totally unbothered by her threat. Why? The cup was filled with coffee beans. They would do no harm to the gadget. A shoe shiner was arrested and taken to the police station where Justin worked. The man was shouting he was an honest person. He cleaned people's shoes for free. His clients paid him of their own will. But Justin soon realized which trick the shoe shiner used. The man cleaned one shoe for free. Nobody wanted to look untidy in just one clean shoe, and paid him for shining the other one. Once, Justin's boss called his wife and told her he'd come back home at 8 o'clock. They had no plans for the evening whatsoever. The man was at home almost on time, at 5 minutes past 8. But his wife was furious. The boss was confused. When he came to work the next day, he asked Justin to explain to him why his wife had been so angry. Justin told his boss, Well, your wife expected you to come home at 8 p.m., but you came at 8 in the morning. Justin was sent to patrol the streets. While walking, he saw a weird picture. A man went out of a house with a bucket of water, shouted, and poured this water on the sidewalk. It took Justin some time to figure out why he had done it. The man had been planning to wash his car. But while he was away, it got stolen. Once, a bank was robbed. The police suspected that one of the bank's security guards had helped the criminals. And Justin had to question three of them. The first security guard told him he had heard some shouting and rushed there. But by the time he arrived, the criminals had already been gone. The second security guard explained he had been drinking a cup of coffee at that moment and hadn't even heard anything. And the third guard said that he had run after the thieves, but he had to lace his boot. Without a second thought, he crouched near an emergency exit. At that very moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came back, the criminals had been gone. Justin immediately understood which guard was guilty. Who was it? It was the third security guard. All emergency doors open outwards for safety reasons. Justin's next suspect was a young woman. The guy hadn't seen her yet, but he had her photo. When he was looking at this picture, he felt something was wrong, but couldn't figure out what exactly. Then, all of a sudden, it dawned on him. What did Justin realize? The girl was inside the house, but the door was blocked from the outside. How did she get in and out of the house? Through the second floor window? Unlikely. 
a notorious criminal escaped from a 150-foot tower. Someone had managed to get him a pair of scissors and a rope. Justin found out that the rope was just 75 feet long, and the criminal had cut it in the middle. Now, the future detective needs to understand how it helped the man get away. The criminal indeed cut the rope in the middle, but not across. He made the cut along the rope, tied its two parts together, and got down to the ground without any problems. A new case for Justin. Martin bought a car in September, and now, just a month later, it's stolen. All four suspects are Martin's friends. The crime happened at 10 p.m. on Wednesday. At that time, Alan was playing badminton in the park. Natalie was driving home from work. Roy took his cat for a walk. And Rose was doing some grocery shopping. Who was behind the car theft? Alan. It was October. At 10 p.m., it would be too dark to play badminton. An important document is missing and Justin has to find it before his boss comes back from his vacation. The guy had found out only three people could take the document. At the moment when the papers disappeared, Randy was in his office, analyzing a new case. Johnny was taking a shower before his regular gym workout. And Kayla was at her firearms training. Who took the document? It was Johnny. Who takes a shower before a workout? Airport authorities suspected a gold smuggler was going to fly out from their airport. Justin was sent there to help. The suspect was stopped at the customs. But try as they might, security officers couldn't find anything suspicious in his suitcase. Just some personal belongings. They had to let the man go. But once he picked up his suitcase and started to walk away, Justin realized the man did have the gold. How did he understand it? There were just a few things in the suitcase, meaning the man had to carry it with ease. But he used both his hands to handle it. It means there must be something heavy hidden inside. Justin finished his working day and decided to drop by his favorite coffee shop. But while he was ordering his cappuccino, someone took his wallet. He only saw a man's retreating figure. Justin ran after him, but the man was already driving away in a black car. Our future detective jumped in his own car and started to follow him. He couldn't drive too fast since it was raining. In 10 minutes, the black car disappeared around the corner. When Justin got there, he saw three similar black cars parked in front of the apartment building. It didn't take him long to understand which car belonged to the thief. How did he find it out if he didn't see the man's license? The ground under the first and third cars is dry. But beneath the second car, it's wet. It means its owner has just arrived. Once, Adam agreed to take part in a popular TV show. He had to crack logic puzzles and solve detective riddles to get $1 million. If only he knew at that moment where this decision would lead him. When the guy arrived at the venue, a staff member put a blindfold over his eyes. After that, Adam was taken someplace and left alone. After waiting in silence for a couple of minutes, the guy pulls the blindfold off. He's in a rather large room. There's nothing there except four doors. The guy feels something's wrong, but he can't grasp what exactly. And suddenly, he realizes the ceiling is going down. He needs to get out of the room and fast. He examines the doors more closely. Aha! They all have notes that describe what's behind each of them. The first one? A lake full of piranhas. The second, a room where an avalanche will happen once he sets foot inside. 
The third, high voltage wires hanging above a wet floor. The fourth is a 15th floor room with only one window. Adam knows he needs to decide fast. He opens one door and jumps inside a moment before the ceiling crashes down. Luckily, it's a safe room. Which one is it? The guy picked room number 3. The wires don't touch the water on the floor, and there's some space left between them and the ground. It means it's safe to crawl under the wires. Adam makes it to the next room and finds a note with a task on it. A coin is put into an empty bottle, which is then plugged with a cork. How can you remove the coin without breaking the bottle or pulling the cork out? Adam doesn't need much time to get the coin out. What does he do? Adam pushes the cork into the bottle and shakes the coin out. His next task is to figure out who a criminal is. An elderly lady was walking in the park when a stranger grabbed her bag and hurried away. The woman told the police the man was wearing a coat, a hat, and a pair of glasses. He also had a mustache. The police officers ran in the direction the lady showed them. A bit further, they found the hat, coat, and glasses lying on the ground. They figured out the criminal could hide in the nearby cafe. Adam has a photo of four men, all of them cafe visitors. He needs to understand who took the bag from the elderly woman. He immediately points at one man, and his answer is correct. Which man is it? It can't be the man in a hat or the one wearing a coat. The criminal also got rid of his glasses. It means the man wanted by the police is the one on the right. He has a small wound on his upper lip, must have got rid of his fake mustache in a hurry. The riddle is solved and Adam can go further. Soon he finds out he has to act as a detective again. A famous artist nearly finished his new painting but he had to leave for France. It was an urgent matter, and it kept the man in Paris for a week. When he returned, he discovered his work had been spoiled. Someone had spilled black paint all over it. And it happened recently, because the paint was still fresh. The artist was furious. He invited his maid, gardener, and maintenance worker and questioned them. He said, someone spoiled my painting while I was away. Do you know anything about it? I never enter your studio without your permission, the maid said. The maintenance worker added, We don't use black paint for any repairs in the house. I don't know who could do that. Gardner got angry. I've been working for you for 15 years. Do you think I could do this to you? All of them sounded sincere. But then, who spoiled the painting? Being a smart guy, Adam realizes right away the one to blame is the maintenance worker. The artist never mentioned the way the painting was spoiled. Since the answer is correct, Adam can continue. He enters a narrow hall. There, on a small table, there's a glass of orange juice. It seems to be half full, but Adam has to figure out if it's really so. How can he do it without using any measuring tools or pouring any juice out of the glass? Adam tilts the glass until the juice is just touching the rim. The bottom of the glass is invisible. So the guy concludes the glass is more than half full. If a part of the bottom was visible, It would mean the glass was less than half full. The next riddle Adam has to crack goes like this. A man is thinking about how fast his life is flying by. The day before yesterday, I was 34. And the next year, I'll be 37. The man hasn't made any mistakes in his calculations. Can you guess what day his birthday is? Adam spends 20 minutes trying to figure this puzzle out and succeeds. What is his answer?
The man's birthday is on December 31st. He's thinking about it on January 1st. The day before his birthday, he was 34. The next day, he turned 35. A new year started the next day, and that year, he's going to turn 36. And he will be 37 the following year. The riddle is solved, and Adam is allowed to move to the next room. In the middle, there's a large TV screen. Suddenly, it switches on. Adam sees two girls who are going down to a dark basement. No, 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 the guy whispers. That's how all horror movies start. And right he is. The door slams behind the girls' backs. It's so unexpected that Adam jumps in his seat. The girls scream. Since the power's out, one of them switches on the flashlight on her phone. They see three doors. Something's moving behind the first one. Who's there? Adam can hear one girl whispering. Her voice is trembling. It turns out that the first door hides, oh no, several hungry zombies. A big fire's ranging behind the second door. And if the girls open the third door, they'll see exposed live electrical wires. And then, a voice tells Adam, you have to say which door they should choose. If you make a mistake, they won't survive. Hmm, no pressure whatsoever. (laughs) Luckily, Adam is smart enough to help the girls. Which door does he pick? The third door. The power's out, and the wires are totally harmless. Nice day, Vivian, who lived in a town on the seashore, decided to go for a hike alone. But after hours of trekking, she ended up on a section of the forest she wasn't familiar with. Before her were three paths. One path had bear footprints leading away. Another had human shoe prints. And the third was right by the river. Which one should Vivian take to find her way? The river path. Since she lives in a coastal town, the river mouth most likely ends up in the sea. That way, she could figure out where she is. Melissa is sharing a train car with three other people. It's a very hot day, and the air conditioner doesn't even work. James starts complaining and only calms down after opening the window. Melissa lays down her red silk scarf her grandmother gave her next to her. Judith compliments it. Robert, a senior, mentions that he forgot to bring a gift for his wife who will pick him up from the train station. James has a crush on Judith. After a while, Melissa goes to the bathroom and comes back to find the scarf missing. Who was the one who took it? None of them. It was a hot day and James opened the window. The wind sent the scarf flying right out of it. Some zombies have Diego trapped in a room. They're surrounding him. He's stuck and can't escape. Their arms are breaking in and reaching for him. When Diego looks around, he realizes that he's in a small newspaper stand with magazines and pocketbooks. And looking around him more attentively, he finds a roll of tape nearby. How can he avoid those nasty bites? The only way for Diego to escape will be to tape those magazines around crucial parts of his body where they can't lay his teeth on him. It'll be light enough for him to run away from the zombies without getting hurt. Plus, he'll have plenty of reading material for the road. Evan got lost in a forest, and just his luck, it was snowing. The only thing the police searching for him found were four parallel lines leading into the forest. Something doesn't seem right, they thought, and took several people into questioning. Nick said he had been at the store buying some groceries. Vanessa said she had been babysitting. Christina had been at work the whole time. After hearing the stories, they arrested Nick. Why?
Nick was in a wheelchair. The four parallel lines were left by Nick rolling into the forest and back out. It's the beginning of a new school year, and Dave started a new job as a computer studies teacher at a local high school. Another fellow teacher, Roy, didn't really welcome him because he wanted that position. But at the end of the day, there was a security breach which leaked out a lot of important information about the school. When the police questioned everyone, including Roy and Dave, they each gave their stories. Dave said, I was checking exam papers and was at the staff room the whole time. Roy said, I was preparing homework for my classes when everything happened. Who should the police arrest? Who was lying? Dave. There wouldn't be any exams on the first day of school. The owner of an ice cream parlor filed a theft report. Someone stole all the money from the register. He was only gone for like two minutes. Detective Callum showed up 20 minutes later. There were three people inside. Ainsley said she had been talking on the phone with her friend. She hadn't seen anything. Red said he just arrived a couple of minutes ago. Joshua said he wasn't really paying attention. He didn't notice anything. So, can you figure out who's lying? Who stole the money? Rhett said he had just arrived, but his ice cream's already melted. Liar. Phoenix wanted to get her dad the best birthday present ever, but she didn't know what he wanted. She decided to break into his laptop to see what he had saved in his online shopping cart. One problem, the laptop required a password, and Phoenix didn't know it. Luckily, there was a note next to it. She sent a picture of it to her friend, Detective Callum. He solved it right away. Can you? The note doesn't make sense because it's upside down. Flip it over, and you'll see a sequence of numbers 88, 89, 90, 91. The numbers before it are 86 and 87. So the password is 8687. Detective Callum traveled to a small neighboring city where young women were being kidnapped every day. Four had already gone missing. They all lived on the same street. Their names were Ava, Bella, Celeste, and Daphne. There were only three women left on the street. Ava, Riley, and Georgia. Callum had to act fast. Who would be the next target? The women are getting kidnapped in alphabetical order. A, B, C, D. The next target will be Ava. Mr. Coleman's mansion was robbed while he was on vacation. He immediately called Detective Callum. Everyone who had been to the house got interrogated. Sydney, his sister, said she'd gone to the house a couple of times to find some papers on Mr. Coleman's desk. Samantha, the gardener, said she'd come every week to water the plants. Asher, the cleaner, said he'd come every Friday to clean the house. Callum found all three of their fingerprints on Mr. Coleman's desk. He now knew exactly who the robber was. Ooh. It was Samantha, the gardener. Sydney and Asher had a reason to touch the desk, but Samantha wasn't even supposed to be in Mr. Coleman's office. There aren't any plants in there. A rich woman was robbed on her private yacht during a ferocious storm. A witness said they saw Kai watching the woman right before she was robbed. Kai denied everything and said he was in his cabin at the time, writing a letter to his wife. Detective Callum asked to see the letter. Five seconds after Kai handed it to him, Detective Callum put him in handcuffs. Why? Kai said he wrote the letter during the storm. There's no way his writing could be this neat when the entire yacht was swaying around like crazy. Logan, a young businessman, was poisoned in his house. 
Detective Callum was on the scene. Pretty soon, he had three suspects. Logan's girlfriend, Michaela. She said she hadn't seen him that day because she was busy at work. Next, there was his business partner, Rob. Rob said they'd had an argument, and they both got pretty angry, but he hadn't poisoned Logan. The last suspect was Blair, the driver. She said she wouldn't know how to poison someone even if she wanted to. Who should Detective Callum arrest? Look, there's fresh lipstick on Logan's shirt. It matches Michaela's. But she said she hadn't seen him that day. Suspicious. Eloise found her friend Fleur poisoned in her room. She called Callum and told him she was walking past Fleur's house and noticed her light was on. She texted her, but Fleur didn't respond. She got really worried, so she broke a window, climbed in, and found her on the floor. But Detective Callum didn't believe her. He immediately arrested her for poisoning her friend. Why? Eloise said she broke a window to get in. If that was true, the broken glass should be inside the room, but it wasn't. Eloise had to cover her tracks, so she broke the glass later from the inside. A college student was robbed during a flag presentation. Detective Callum arrived to investigate the case and interrogated several suspects. Kennedy said that she was in the bathroom at the time. Gavin said he'd noticed that the Japanese flag was hanging upside down, so he'd gone over to fix it. Eleanor said that the student who was robbed was her best friend. She would never do that. Who's guilty? It's Gavin. He said that the Japanese flag was hanging upside down. But that flag looks the same either way. He's lying. Someone stole a diamond necklace at a private VIP party. The police followed the robber into a boutique store. There were three customers, and they didn't know who the robber was. So they called Detective Callum. Adele said she'd never even been to a VIP party. Those things are for wealthy and famous people. Joseph said he'd never even heard about the party. Florence said she'd been in the shop for the last half hour, trying to find that perfect accessory. Who should Detective Callum arrest? Adele. She's wearing a gold bracelet and earrings. Seems like she was just at a pretty fancy event. Maybe a VIP party? Mary was a college teacher. It was the beginning of a new school year, and three new students joined the class. When Mary saw them, she immediately realized something was off about one of them. Who? It's the guy in the middle. He doesn't have a shadow. Logan worked as a security officer on a small cruise ship. One day, during a severe storm, he found Mr. Lewis lying on the deck. When the man came to his senses, he said someone had hit him on the head and taken his wallet. Logan had three suspects. He visited them in their cabins. Linda told him she was feeling queasy because of seasickness. She couldn't even get up from her bed. Denise said she had been watching a movie on her smartphone. And Philip said he had been writing a letter to his wife. Logan immediately understood who had hit Mr. Lewis. Do you know it? It was Philip. Look at his letter. The handwriting is immaculate, but it's impossible to write so accurately during a storm. Kayla went on a business trip. She didn't have time to tell her boyfriend about her plans, so she left him a note with clues. In it, the woman wrote, I'm in the city that is three of seven chicken, two of three cat, and one of two goat. I'll be here for a week. Come visit me. Do you know where Kayla's boyfriend should go? To Chicago. Yeah. Look at these guys carefully. Can you tell which one has drawn the graffiti?
It's the guy on the left. He has some spray paint on his hoodie. Alan was driving along a small country road when he saw that someone had crashed their car into a tree. A moment later, he spotted a man running toward him. Help me, please! I was moving rather slowly when a truck suddenly cut me off. I lost control of my car and crashed into a tree. Alan gave the man a lift to the police station in the nearest town. They found the truck driver surprisingly fast. He was right near the doors of the police station. But the man denied cutting the smaller car off. He claimed he was going to the police to report the accident. Suddenly, Alan realized who was lying. Have you figured it out? Look at the tire tracks. It's obvious that those left by the truck go over the ones left by the car. It means the truck couldn't have cut the smaller car off, and its driver is lying. Several police officers were called to a hotel. One of the employees was found unconscious on the floor. The police checked the cameras to figure out what had happened. They didn't see the criminal, but now they had three suspects, all of them hotel guests. Sarah said, I heard some noise, but I stayed in my room because I was scared. James told the police he had been outside. He was trying to catch a taxi to go sightseeing. And Damien said he had been sleeping at home at the time of the accident. Who is lying? Damien. He's a hotel guest. Then how could he be at home sleeping? Beverly was making dinner in the kitchen when she heard glass shatter. She rushed to the living room and saw the window broken. Someone had thrown a stone that was now lying in the middle of the room. Beverly called the police, but they didn't manage to figure out who the culprit was. The next day, when Beverly came home from work, she saw something on her doormat. It was a note. Williamson was the surname of Beverly's neighbors. There were three teenagers in that family, Mark, Roy, and Natalie. Which one broke the window? It was Mark. The note says, question mark, Williamson. Bruce owned a large store that sold expensive designer items. Recently, there have been several thefts there. The man asked his friend Gabriel, who was a police detective, to check what was going on. Gabriel spent two hours in the store. When he left it, he knew who the thief was and who was guilty of these crimes. The thief was the detective himself. He easily stole a pair of costly sunglasses to prove that the store security was very bad. That's the reason for so many thefts. One of these young women has a dog. Can you tell which one? It's the girl on the left. Her pooch has torn her sneakers. When Amy entered the office, she noticed that her colleague Emma was very upset. It was just the beginning of the workday, but someone had already stolen her purse. Only those who worked in the company could get into the office. Amy started her own investigation. Jenna, who worked in IT, said she had been fixing somebody's computer. Joanna, the secretary, answered she had been on the phone with some clients. James, the sales manager, said, I've been in a three-hour-long meeting. I'm exhausted. Amy knew right away who had taken the purse. Can you figure it out? It's James. The working day has just started. How could he be in such a long meeting? Esme was having her usual walk in the forest. By nighttime, she realized she had gotten lost again. She was wandering around until she came across the witch's house. The girl petted the cat, (laughs) greeted the witch, and asked the woman to send her home. At that time, the witch was participating in a math tournament for witches from all over the world. She really wanted to win and to prove she was the smartest witch out there. There was one last task she couldn't solve. The witch promised that if Esme helped her, she'd let her go home. If not, Esme would have to stay with the witch forever. Here's the task. Make three identical squares by moving only three matches.
You just have to move these three matches over there. It works, and Esme can return home. Thor asked his friends to guess what his laptop's three-digit password was. Each of them made a guess. The numbers they chose were 357-902-907-954. Even though no one's guess was right, every person guessed one digit correctly and exactly in its right place. Can you figure out Thor's passcode? Since just one of them guessed one digit correctly, the first digit can't be 9. In this case, three people would have guessed it right. And there wouldn't be enough people to guess the third digit. The only other option for the first digit is 3. Which means the second digit can't be 5 and the third one can't be 7. Since the second one can't be 5, then it's 0. Two people guessed it correctly. And the third digit is 4. If it was 2, it would mean someone guessed two digits correctly, 0 and 2. But that's not true. So Thor's code is 304. Students were divided into two teams to do one task. Storm, Dean, and Brooke were in Team Yellow. Elsie, Emma, and Veda were in Team Purple. Following the same logic, what group does Lexi belong to? In Team Yellow, there are students whose names have just one syllable. In Team Purple, there are students with the names that consist of two syllables. Lexi's names has two syllables, so she belongs to Team Purple. Atlas got trapped in the attic of an old house. There are just three ways out, and all of them dangerous. Behind the first door, the roof and the floor are made out of magnifying glass, and the sun will burn anyone who comes in. Behind the second door, there's a room filled with poisonous gas. And the third door is hiding a hungry lion. How can Atlas escape? He should wait until it's night. The sun will set, and the guy will safely walk through the first door. Now, take a look at Iris and her close friends. Max, Jenny, Josh, and Ren. Who's her partner? It must be Josh. Look, they have matching tattoos. On a rainy night, Dylan was driving past a bus stop. There were three people there. An elderly lady who was feeling unwell, a doctor who saved many lives, and Selena, a girl Dylan had been crushing on for years. Unfortunately, there was only room for one more person in the car. What should Dylan do? He should give his car to the doctor, who would take the elderly lady and driver to the hospital. And Dylan can stay at the bus stop with the girl of his dreams. Charlie, Andy, Taylor, and Alex are all related to each other. But one of them is the opposite gender from the other three. Here's what you know. Alex is either Charlie's brother or Charlie's only daughter. Alex's sister is either Andy or Taylor. Taylor's only son is either Charlie or Andy. Can you tell who's the opposite gender from the other three? If Alex is Charlie's only daughter, then Alex cannot have a sister. It means that Alex is Charlie's brother. If Alex's sister is Andy, then Andy's a girl. And according to fact 3, Charlie is Taylor's only son. But Alex is Charlie's brother. So we have a contradiction here. It means that Alex's sister is Taylor. So Taylor's a girl. Charlie, Alex, and Taylor are siblings. And Andy is Taylor's son. Keenan was watching TV when a detective arrived with a search warrant. The detective said that the city bank had been robbed, and Keenan was the main suspect. The man replied that he hadn't even left the house that day. He couldn't do anything. The police didn't find the money, but still arrested the man. Why? Keenan said he hadn't left the house. But take a look at the calendar and the grocery store receipt. The dates are the same. 
It means Keenan at least did some grocery shopping and lied about not leaving the house. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.